The ideals of chattel slave empire stress the innate unfitness and lesser status of certain people. No less is true for languages of Hitlerian empire or Nazism. Antebellum heroes and segregation laws of America were unquestionably centerpieces of 20th century fascist protocol. Savannah travel and leisure celebrants such as John Calhoun, Jefferson Davis, Alexander Stevens, and Henry Ford were also celebrated in Adolf Hitler's writing alongside the degradation of Africans as plantation fodder and native people as disposable obstacles. The linkages are alive and well. A lack of regular countervailing content still, however, frames the day. In 1970 Savannah, J.B. Stoner, Lester Maddox, and desegregation resistant newspaper editorials shaped both past and future. Hitlerian philosophy and Confederate tenants lived in them. Today, touristic brands profit from the same plantations, grinning servants, elegant masters, and African effigy wall hangings as entertainment. An unspoken frame for omission is customary. But what can be done today which meets the new challenges and demands for genuine equality? With the past and present implicated in the harm, what role must the media play in genuinely creating and supporting fresh historiographic vision? Vision which truly includes and balances meaningful indigenous presence and power. The presence of a sustained liberation ethos, along with reconstruction legacy, self-emancipation agency, and self-determination are necessary for helpful community development. A comprehensive archive is necessary. We need more than bullet points, timelines, trivia tips, or did-you-know-isms. The demand is right now. We insist. Which way, Savannah? Support countervailing narrative representation, creation, and promotion in the Savannah region and beyond. Thank <laughs> you.